This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Everybody, welcome to Films and Fermentation, episode 164. That's right, we are Films and Fermentation, a movie and alcohol podcast, a good pod's top recommended podcast, too. I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cthulhu <laughs> Jack. <laughs> and tonight we have a very, very special guest. I am so excited to have this gentleman on our show. He is a rising YouTube star. I think it's safe to say that, considering the the growth in subscribers you have had in a in a very fairly short amount of time. Yes. Uh, so he is this guy right here. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much, guys, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we, we're really excited to have you on tonight, sir. Uh, again, we are Films of Fermentation, as I said, Movie and Alcohol Podcast. We're just three friends like talk shit about movies while getting shit-faced. In this episode, we unearth the forgotten relics of cinema that left at a time left buried deep in the sands of obscurity. Today, we're dusting off some forgotten films so obscure, we had to call in our YouTube friend himself, Cthulhu Jack, to help us figure out why these movies faded away faster than a VHS tape left in the sun. So pour yourself a drink and let's dive into the cinematic abyss where only the bravest cinephiles dare to venture. Don't forget you drop us an email at filmsandfermentation at gmail.com or visit linktree.com slash filmsandfermentation to find all of our social media and podcast links. Become part of the Films of Fermentation family by supporting us on Patreon or buying our merchandise at teespring.com. We are part of the Deluxe Edition Network at the deluxeeditionnetwork.com, The Den. Don't forget that the Denny Awards will be uh, announced very soon. Hopefully we won some of the awards for the Deluxe Edition Network. We'll see what happens. And make sure you check out the podcast of the month from The Den on the, for the month of September, The Church of Tarantino. I think the title of that podcast tells you everything you need to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, what are we uh, drinking this evening? I'll go first. Go I am. Uh, it's it's cleaning time, so okay. I am deeping into the deep, uh, digging diving deep deeply. into the, diving deeply, digging into the <laughs> back recesses deep, of my deep, refrigerator. Deep, that's all, folks. Pretty much, right? To see what I have left over from the summer, and I found two uh, beers from a local craft brewery. Uh, I'll be enjoying the Peach Oasis. Which is a um, fruit ale bursting with white peach flavor, four and a half percent alcohol by volume. This is from the uh, Warwick Brewing, uh, Warwick Farm Brewing, not too far from one of the golf courses I play at. Uh, another one from the same brewery is the Brodello New Traditions Mexican Lager, which is five point one percent alcohol by volume. Um, and this will have a hint of lime if uh, memory serves correctly. <laughs> so, Sounds good. Wow. Like, what you got going on? You're, you're going light tonight, there, Kev. I am going. <laughs> I'm tonight. starting. Off I got to with... work tomorrow. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm starting off with um, Devil's Backbone's pumpkin spice lager because I'm start. I'm already starting into my uh, October stuff. Uh, Five point two percent alcohol by volume. Then I'm moving on to the Devil's Backbones <laughs> O-Fest Lager. 
uh, their Oktoberfest, which is 5.9% alcohol by volume. Nice. Mike, too, I'm hitting into the fall stuff a little bit. I got a beer that I know Mike gave me. This is the Wolf House Marzen, Thick and Thin Brewing Company. Ooh. It is a 5.2% alcohol by volume, uh, amber lager with clean malt flavor. And if I finish that one tonight, I have as a backup yeah. uh, from Down East uh, Brewery, the Cider Donut. Kev, I think oh, you got me this one. Oh, oh, oh. I love that right? one. Yeah, the Cider Donut, unfiltered. Uh, I can't read the stuff on the side because it's upside down for some reason. Um, it is 5.2% alcohol by volume. All right. Molly! Mike, anything special happened this week? This week in film history, legendary actor, iconic voice talent, and Army veteran James Earl Jones passed away. He was 93 years old. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I know, right? You know, I mean, I, I saw it. I was like, well, 93 years old. That kind of makes sense, but it's still yeah. a little bit of a shock like, to me. Damn. Yeah. It still yeah. hurts. It still hurts. Jack, feel free to like jump in on any of these if you have anything you'd like to add to any of the facts we have here this week. Sure, um, sure, absolutely. Uh, the last thing I remember seeing James Earl Jones in was The Big Bang Theory. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I'm same with my, myself as well, I think. Yeah, he was playing himself, a, a funny like caricature of himself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where they, I like they, Star Wars too. <laughs> I like Star Wars too. And they ring the Carrie Fisher's doorbell and run away. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I read uh, a little clip uh, clip on the show the other night with uh, him him as Vader, and then uh, also in the field of field of dreams. So that was mm -hmm. a good one to always. Yeah, we're thinking next week for our uh, program, we're going to do a, a tribute to James Earl Jones. Uh, oh, kind nice. of talk, talk about some of like our favorite films that are you know not Darth Vader specific. You know, just I mean, I know a lot of a lot of people know him as Darth Vader, but there are so many iconic roles that he that he played over the years right. um from you know like one of the early films he did was the great white hope which uh is his only oscar nomination in his entire career which is kind of a, a robbery in my eyes but <laughs> uh what's the next one you got there mike 1964 film that start started spaghetti western genre a fistful of daughters premiered directed by Sergi sergio Leon, starring Clint Eastwood in his first leading role. Yes, and it was is a fistful of dollars part of the Man with No Name trilogy? Yes. Yeah, because it's fistful of dollars, and it's the good, the bad, and ugly, and uh, a few dollars more. A few dollars more, right? Uh, what's your next one? You got there, Mike? Nineteen sixty-four. Walt Disney awarded Medal of Freedom at the White House. I don't got much to say about that. I don't know. Just a little fact. Is this like this is this is be a couple years before they froze his head, right? <laughs> yeah, like ten years before he froze his head. Or something. <laughs> uh, uh, what's the next one you got? In 1999, Fight Club, film based on the novel by Chuck Palahniuk. Palahniuk, <laughs> directed <laughs> by Dave Fincher. And starring Edward Norton and Brad Pitt premieres at the Venice Film Festival. Don't spoil the ending for anybody, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you know. <laughs> Gwyneth wow, Lauter's yeah. head is in the box, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong movie, Kevin. <laughs> no, he said, whose head did he say was in the box? Gwyneth <laughs> <laughs> Lauter's head in the box. <laughs> yeah, it's a blast uh, for the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's in the box? What's in the box? Bob. I love David Fincher movies in general, so yeah, mm -hmm. uh, if I uh, up with it. Speaking of uh, who's in the box, uh, what's <laughs> in the box? Um, I was uh, somebody left a comment about uh, on one of my videos the other day, and I think I wrote back. So I, I but you remember the old dollar theaters? You used to be able to mm -hmm. go and see a movie for a dollar back in the day. Yeah. Well, I had seen Seven a bunch of times, so I went in and I was like, I was finally at the dollar theater. I was like, oh, I'll check it out again. Well, yet the prints by the time they get to the dollar theater are always beat up, mm -hmm. so we're, theater was pretty, you know, pretty full. All of a sudden, uh, gets movies going, going, going. Gets to that scene. What's in the box? What's in the box? Movie steps and breaks. 
Oh, sorry, we we can't fix it. Everybody was like, no. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'll tell you the ending, and they're like, no. <laughs> That's crazy. I was like, it could be the worst moment in time of just sitting there watching a movie, and all of a sudden, just a, you know, film break. Same thing happened to me when I went to see American Pie, and Allison Hannigan was just about to tell us where she stuck the <laughs> <laughs> I was telling you when I, Adrian and I went on vacation. We went to the movies and we went to go see Dungeons and Dragons, and it stopped near the end. And we had to go yeah. online to watch the end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> the movie theater I used to go to as as a kid was such a crap hole that there there was more than one time where we had to evacuate for a fire in the popcorn machine. So like, <laughs> not the not the first time I've like missed out on the end of a film. Time to change the oil. <laughs> oh man movie, uh, hey, movie, movie theater experiences for sure yeah oh we had a we had a theater growing up when i was a kid uh, i grew up in philadelphia and we had a theater called the colonial and it was one of those one old one screen theaters with the marquee out front and it was a dilapidated building like you we were wa- we'd watch a movie and they had a whole area cordoned off because the ceiling was falling down uh <laughs> You know, you stuck to the floors when you walk down the aisle. It was it was yep. terrible, but it was cheap, and we used to go to it a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, what's the next one you got there, Mike? This next one is for you, Lee. Two thousand five yeah. Supernatural debuts on the WB, starring Jensen Ackles and Jared Pilecki. Longest running North American fantasy series. Uh, about ten years too long. <laughs> <laughs> I, that. I love the show, but it really should yep. have ended after like season seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's hard to yeah. most WB yeah. shows. Most WB <laughs> shows outlive their their life, you know. Yeah. Well, most WB shows don't last more than half a season. Yeah. <laughs> no. Were you going to say it, or Jack? Um, I saw on uh, Padalecki uh, posted on his Instagram that uh, it was the whatever four year anniversary, I guess, of the show ending or whatever it was, mm. and uh, of the bridge, and I was like, ooh, that ending. That yeah. still hurts. <laughs> we're we're not going to spoil it for Mikey. He still hasn't watched the last five episodes. <laughs> oh, Mikey! <laughs> I have to wait for my wife to catch up. In, uh, in 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 his defense, it took me a real long time to finish that final season too. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a weird ending. Uh, yeah, the, I love I love the. Uh, what's the next? Oh, oh, we got yeah. one more here. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We got two more. Uh, 2005 Pride and Prejudice, the film adaptation of Jane Austen's novel of the same name, starring Garrett Knightley and Elizabeth Bennett, is released. One of what? 800 <laughs> adaptations, adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. Pride and yeah. Prejudice yeah. Yeah. Uh, I prefer Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. zombies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, your last back here is, is, yeah. is an awesome one. I love, I love this movie. Yeah. My last one is in 2015, The Martian, based on the novel by Andy Weir, directed by Ridley Scott and starring Matt Damon, premieres at the Toronto International Film Festival. Funniest movie of the year, according to the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> Won the Golden Globe for best comedy or musical. Uh, I think I guess technically you can call it a musical too, since he does listen to a lot of disco, a lot of ABBA in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> But I love the Martian. It's it's I put it on there as uh, like one of my top rewatchable movies. Like I could just yep. pop it in whenever and just have it playing in the background. Hmm. Uh, Jack, what's a what's a go to for you for like a background movie? Like something you just you've seen so much you could just have it on in the background, just like you know, like noise or whatever. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah, Blade Runner. Wow. Yeah, I've seen that movie uh, a lot, uh, a lot. That. Um... Or Return of the Living Dead. Okay. That's I point. was not expecting a quick answer, and I wasn't expecting that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Just based on like some of the movies I've seen on your channel, I wasn't expecting Blade, but it makes sense. If, if you're uh, somebody who's worked in uh, Hollywood like you used to, Blade Runner seems like a real good uh, uh, go-to film for somebody like you. Um, yeah, just I, it's one of those you can kind of tune in and out of, and I don't know. Mm-hmm. If seeing it enough times, you just kind of keep picking up new things, and... Um, I don't know, I'm not knocking sad. it. I love Blade Runner too. It's it's one of my favorite films. One of my favorite Harrison Ford performances. Oh yeah, um, for sure. For sure. Uh, all right. Very important question: Is Deckard mm-hmm. a replicant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. 
you, know, you watch you watch twenty forty nine, you no. kind of have to question it at that point. But <laughs> yeah, I no, I refuse to watch that. I'm not going to. I don't want to poison the well. I've poisoned the well enough by destroying my brain on the recent stuff that's been made of other IPs. But mm. um, yeah, no, I, I that's like the sacred cow to me. <laughs> See, yeah. I I saw uh, I saw twenty forty nine in the theater. Uh, I saw it because I, I I'm a fan of Denny Villeneuve. Nice. And you know I love his I love the cinematography in his movies are so beautiful, uh, and it's the movie where I fell in love with Anna de Armas because she steals the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you're somebody who is really adamant about the original Blade Runner, it will kind of ruin it for you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean I've seen enough yeah. of the podcasts and such and, and uh, spoilers yeah. on it, so I know all about that, and it's just that's that's enough, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, teach his own, you know, so, yeah. I mean, other things like alien aliens and, you know, the, the hundreds of those they've made. I mean, to me, those are like the Jason franchises at this point. Mm. You know? <laughs> so to, to me, there's two, there's alien and aliens. Exactly. <laughs> like I kinda, <laughs> and I haven't seen any since then. <laughs> yeah. I, no. like I, alien three, like alien three, you know, like it, 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 it that was David Fisher's first film. Yeah, can't blame it on David Fincher. There's a lot of studio uh, interference. Right. Um, Kevin and I saw Prometheus in the theater, and we both walked out of it going, "I'm not sure what we just watched." (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And then I haven't seen any of the others since then. So I did, unfortunately, see Predator versus Alien Requiem. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean to me these they, they all kind of blend together at this point so yeah. I, you know what i mean so, i mean the first two still stand out yeah um, oh yeah i actually just watched the original one recently and it's still it still holds up it's still an amazing movie like you can't yeah you can't i mean the, the, the seeing it in the big screen again this summer was amazing i mean that just wow yeah you, just, you covered that on your channel right yeah yeah i mean man i never saw it at the time in the theater um mm. i was a little too young but uh yeah seeing, seeing it again to just like you know focusing in and all that stuff in the theater was empty i mean there's like maybe a dozen of us in there mm-hmm. which is kind of sad but um it was really pretty cool to see it again oh, i would love to see yeah. that in the theater <laughs> yeah uh okay mike you have any uh must try beer craft destinations for this evening i have a craft destination this is creature comforts brewing company athens georgia Come visit the tasting room at Creature Comforts Production Facility at Southern Mills in Athens, Georgia. Originally built in 1900, the mill has been updated for mixed use. The brewery is committed to preserving as much of the character of the building as possible during the reconstruction and was a participant of the 2018 Athens Clark Heritage Foundation Awards for the ADAPT reuse. The 40,000 square foot historic building houses state of the art equipment, including a full automated dual 85 barrel brewing house from German manufacturer Steinecker, a 24 head rotary filler for canning, and a 50,000 barrel worth of annual fermentation capacity. There we go, boys. You got to go to Georgia. That's a lot of damn beer. <laughs> we'll add that to the road trip. Uh, we are going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, Coffee Brothers, and then we will be back with our main segment. I'm going to talk to Cthulhu Jack a little bit about his YouTube channel and how he got it started. And then we're going to jump into our main segment for tonight, which is one of our favorite recurring topics, movies that time forgot. We'll be right back. I love a good beer, but right now, I could use a good cup of coffee. Have you heard about Coffee Brothers? Oh, yeah. They're that coffee company out of New York, right? Well, they're more like a coffee wizards of New York City. They source these amazing seasonal blends and single-origin coffees. It's like a flavor adventure in every cup. And get this. They roast everything in small batches. None of that mass-produced stuff. It's like each bean gets... The VIB treatment. VIB? Very important bean. Hmm. Sounds fancy, but is it worth it? Definitely. 
plus they're a two-person team. I mean, that's dedication right there. Two brothers, one mission to caffeinate the world. And right now you can save 10% on your order. I mean, who doesn't love a good discount? All right, you've convinced me. Let's get some Coffee Brothers now. Coffee Brothers, where every cup is a sip of perfection. Save 10% on your next order with the code FNF10. That's FNF10. Cheers to great coffee. All right. Thank you for sticking with us after that short word from Coffee Brothers. Make sure you use the promo code FNF10 to get 10% off your order. We are back with our main segment tonight. We actually got a two-parter on our main segment this evening because first we're going to talk to our uh, esteemed guest. Uh, is it safe to call you a YouTube star at this point since you're up to like like 75,000 subscribers now? <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but uh, <laughs> sure, I guess. <laughs> I want to say, like, I'm going to give a little preface to this, like how I discovered you. Sure. Um, so it was a, a case where YouTube actually got the algorithm right. Okay. And I was, I, I do a lot of writing in my spare time, like short stories and things like that. And I was writing something recently where I needed some more information about cosmic horror and like Lovecraftian themes and things like that. So I've been doing a lot of research on it and your, one of your videos came up on my YouTube feed and I'm, it's cause you know, the internet watches us. Right. And it was gods of the deep. <laughs> The trailer Which, or the uh, the review? It was it was your review of Gods of the. Oh, Deep. okay, good. And I had not ever heard of this film. <laughs> which, wow. Which these guys will tell you is weird because I watch everything. Right. Um, like I have, I I do what you do. I go on Tubi and I just troll for like movies I never heard of. Sure. And uh, when I saw your video, I was like, this seems interesting. It seems pretty low budget and kind of like b-movie ish but that's my that's my jam so i watched gods of the deep and i enjoyed it i thought it was it was my kind of quirky right. uh and i liked the review video so i was like oh, i'm gonna check this out so i watched a couple more and then i you know s subscribed to you and now i the minute your videos pop up it's one of the first things i go to on youtube right and mm -hmm. uh <laughs> so you started your channel like roughly seven months ago yes Correct. So that's that's where my first question comes in. Like, how do you account for quick success? Because you started seven months ago, and now you're up to almost seventy five thousand subscribers. That's a ten thousand subscriber growth, give or take, each month. Like, that's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's been a little strange. And thank you for you uh, as a member as well. I really appreciate yeah. the support for the channel. Um, yeah, it was a lot. I mean. I don't know how far back you want me to go, but uh, I've been studying YouTube for a long time uh, since around 2019 when uh, everything, you know, hit the blip. Yeah. And uh, that's, I hadn't been on, prior to that, I hadn't been on YouTube other than just going, oh, I need an intro video for this or I got to fix that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I felt YouTube was kind of like, eh, whatever. Um, and also I was, my other job I was doing, it, it, I just didn't have the time. Yeah. Um, but I just watched a lot of it. And then I, I studied a lot of different um, uh, movie review channels and watched a, a bunch for a while and trying to figure out the best way to kind of, um, you know, make, make it my own thing, but also kind of condense it. And I remember one YouTuber saying that uh, he goes, he goes, oh, I don't know how somebody could talk about a movie in, in five minutes and you know, make it a total synopsis. Mm -hmm. and that's impossible. And there's a lot of channels out there that do hour long talks. And so I felt like, well, that's cool. You know, cause I tuned into the, some of those guys. Um, and I thought, well, why not the, like the bite size, you know, ones? Cause for one, I just like fast editing and my background, yeah. a lot of my background is editing. I've been doing it for a long time and, um, I don't like being on camera. Um, and I also, what I'm, working towards is uh creating something bigger than just me mm -hmm. so to speak uh with the brand that we're working on so i thought that between all this and my background with editing and um writing it was just kind of a testament of just going um just start cranking out these kind of like little bite-sized pieces of uh entertainment um 
I, and I have to say, like, I it's one of the things I enjoy about your channel is that it's like it's a quick watch. It's like five minutes. Right. Take. Right. Um, right. although I do like watch a video and then go, I could have used a little bit more. <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes you do well, you do on it, you know, like you know, yeah, I'll watch like yeah. like a CinemaSins video is probably like twenty five minutes to a half hour long usually. Sure. And I find myself zoning out here and there, at least with a five minute bite sized video like yours, I'm you know, I can I can give it my full attention. Right, yeah, exactly. And you know, I, 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 you know, I grew up with movies. I've been around movies a long time. Uh, watched movies. You know, sold movies. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you know, literally like a video jockey and stuff like that too. And um, so, it's just kind of fun to dive back into that. And now that I have the freedom to do that, which I didn't prior, um, you know, I've kind of just you know dove in feet first. But to I guess answer your question, um, I honestly don't know. What happened was. Um, you know, I was kind of puttering along for a while and then I got put in the doghouse because, um, well, I just took some misinformation and, uh, <laughs> I kind of went, kind of got smacked by YouTube by posting something I shouldn't have, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, people liked it for about 10 seconds when I was up there. Yeah. Um, but they, they slammed me for about 90 days and, um, that's kind of soul crushing uh, when mm -hmm. you start as a channel and, um, and being from where my life had just came from, I was like, this was like live or die for me. So, um, I started cranking on videos every, you know, couple of days I started doing three a week. Um, and then, um, uh, once I got out of the doghouse, uh, I noticed that the channels do promotion on each video and mm -hmm. I was like, huh. And so I just started, you know, I was like, well, I wonder if I could put a little bit of coin into this video and this video and this video. And at this point I hit, I was over a hundred videos in at that point. And I figured that was kind of like a good number. Plus I was at the point of like, um, uh, my next, uh, watch hours. Cause I'm not up to my full watch hours yet. That's kind of the thing that I'm na I'm navigating right now. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're kind of on the same track trying to get our watch hours up to that, that monetary status, you know? Oh, it's a crawl, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like oh, it's uh, it's that's like the most brutal part, especially when you're like <laughs> so close. And uh, so yeah, so basically, I just started boosting different videos. And the and and for whatever reason, when the Cthulhu one hit um, that you mentioned, when you know prior to me promoting it, it had already racked up like sixteen thousand views, and that was just by the algorithm. It had nothing to do with me. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what garnered me like the first, I think, almost thousand subs I got. So that mm -hmm. kind of rocketed me. So it's just, um, and and I think also too that was I think just hit Tubi or just had hit streaming at that point. So it was in everybody's mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and also Cthulhu is a you know highly Googled character. Yeah, um, it, is. it is. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so um, no, no, now more than ever. Um, but anyways, yeah. So that's kind of how I you know, just started kind of rolling it with us by doing like little adverts with stuff and trying to just push out certain videos more than others and seeing what would take and what wouldn't. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then YouTube denies some videos because, you know, Russ Myers doesn't, uh, I guess <laughs> they're not big fans of Russ Meyer, I guess in that sense. Yeah. So <clears throat> like, so, uh, we're, we're an audio platform, but we're also on YouTube as well. So anybody watching us on YouTube will see that you are hiding behind your Cthulhu Jack uh, avatar there. Yes. Uh, you, pre you prefer your anonymity. Uh, so if you're watching us on YouTube, it's not a glitch. That's that's the shtick. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to we're going to we're going to respect that. So <clears throat> is it like so what was like your inspiration behind coming up with the Cthulhu Jack uh, brand anyway? Is it just a love for, for, for Lovecraft or, or. Um, well, it's one of those things where I'm, yeah, no, it's the love for Lovecraft. I've, um, something I've been around for a long time and I work with another company that, uh, produces, uh, books and, and such. And so we were dark, trying to think of the, a, uh, the dark, yeah. Dark side media. Dark side media. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is create a character that's, uh, you know, it was just kind of melded both worlds because I feel like the, the characters that we're creating with dark side media is, you know, an embodiment of like a Bogart type of character that mm -hmm. lives in a fictional uh, written world. So, um, you know, it was one of the, it was trying to like meld kind of both those worlds and there's stories coming up on their end where, 
you know, their character goes to Hollywood and so on and so forth. So we just thought it would be a good idea to have kind of like our McDonald type of character, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, but, uh, you know, I also, uh, other than noir films and such like that, I also was thinking of, you know, kind of more like Pee Wee Herman meets Deadpool, Deadpool type of kind of scenario of like a <laughs> character that's just, you know, and uh, you, you, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you are, you're loyal to the character in your videos. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so this, um, this old one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just feel that it's, you know, it, it's good to, it's good to have that, uh, kind of. So guess, it's not anything on. to do with, uh, the Jack Walters character from the Call of Cthulhu video game from the nineties and on PC. <laughs> no, good God, no. <laughs> no, no, man, no. talk about a deep no. cut. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah I, I was going to say. Research. <laughs> I did my research. No. <laughs> research. I actually played that game. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling uh, before you guys came on, Jack and I were talking for a few minutes before the program. When I asked him if I should call him Mister Cthulhu or if Jack was okay, um. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about uh, how I watched a lot of his uh, videos that he's been posting and kind of taking notes as I've been watching him because I wanted to be able to ask some questions tonight. And I was like, I'm not a journalist, but I'm trying hard to be right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you worked in Hollywood for a while, right? Uh, what? Yes, correct. Like what different like aspects of Hollywood you work in? Because I know you've said you've done like makeup and effects and like editing and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah, I first started off as a uh, uh, prop maker. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was going to college and I wanted to do it, you know, at the time and uh, where I was. And so um, there was a couple of movies in town, you know, which I, which I basically was able to get on to work on for free. Mm. and so um and then one day and it, it wasn't easy to get the jobs i mean i was because yeah. you know, these, these these companies came from out of town and i was a local kid in pittsburgh and I, w I was from actually out of town i didn't grow up there and um but i you know i remember going up to the hotel where the uh, offices were and i just sat there and waited and waited and knocked on the door and they're like no we're not gonna hire i'm like listen i want a job i don't care i'll do anything I'll do anything for free <laughs> went there every day for three days and finally like you know all right give you a job and you know I, that, that's basically what i started doing props and then i got um uh selected to be a uh, stand-in for the main actor <laughs> um and uh you know that was interesting and that's basically was my learning experience on on film for and from there i just kind of kept working on pictures there uh then moved to la and you know it went on from there but uh yeah that was the early uh late 80s early 90s so a very very different time yeah 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 you know. this was sort of like uh practical effects turning into cgi kind of time yeah like when i saw jurassic park uh, in 93 man that blew my mind like i was like wow you know um it's pretty dope so. i was i always i told told these guys before i've said it on the show before that i always liked movies i used to watch a lot of, i watched a lot of movies as a kid but it was jurassic park was the movie that I saw it in the theater and thought to myself, wow, this is something that you can do. And yeah, right. It, be it became the springboard for my diving into like as many movies as I could. And so like most of my nineties were spent getting caught up on the seventies and eighties. <laughs> you know, it's funny you bring that up because I'm trying to think of my first moment like that. And I'd have to say it was either it's a tough call, but I'd say it was probably either the original Planet of the Apes, because mm. I, I I remember seeing that as a kid, or it was Star Wars First Run. Okay. Um, either of those two was like, you know, it was around that time where you, I'm just hit with like, you know, this guy's an ape suit running around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, as a little kid, you're freaking out about that stuff. Mm. You know, um, so yeah, no, I know what you mean. I mean, we're, we were all Star Wars fans, you know, from when we were younger. The, the first, one of the first movies I saw in the theater as a kid was Return of the Jedi. Oh, um, nice. And so, like, you know, I love movies from back then. But, it, yeah, it was Jurassic Park was that moment where something sparked in my mind, like, movies are awesome. <laughs> and then <laughs> that's where I just started, like, diving in it. Now, uh, personal question. Uh, yeah, sure. 
practical effects or CGI? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's see. You know, I tell you, coming in from a background of being under the table with three other guys while you have a giant <laughs> syringe full of blood, goop, and gore running up the, you know, going up yeah. and trying to plunge it, it just, and having it explode with all the pressure underneath, it just, we look like the guys from Ghostbusters. <laughs> um, yeah. Times like that, you're like, God, I wish this was like, we could do it in post. Yeah. Um, but looking back, it's, I think it's definitely a meld of both. Um, I think, you know, um, I'm much more of a practical effect person myself, mm -hmm. but I do like that you could take the practical and, you know, kind of, a transmogify it into something just to, just to kind of polish it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Don't overdo yeah. it. Like they, I guess I haven't seen the, the new, uh, was it, you got me on the alien thing. Um, Romulus, oh, I haven't seen the new Romulus, but I know about the whole, I don't know if you guys have seen it or not, but, uh. The uh, the hybrid alien, no the the character that they brought back from the nineteen seventy nine film. Oh yeah, Ash. yeah, 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 Ash. yeah, 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 Ash there. Ash yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I saw some seen of the it yet either. So, I mean, I saw some photos, and it's uh, I don't know. <laughs> the heads of the table work better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I heard I, that I, they used CGI to uh, you know bring back the face and 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 mimic the face and everything, and and um, AI to recreate the voice. Is what I had heard. Mm. Um, but then mm. that goes back to Rogue One when they did the same with Grand Moff Tarkin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah like the, the de aging thing is weird. Uh, you know, I don't know if that works completely well. And the mo movies yeah. today just <clears throat> rely too much on, you know, special effects. <laughs> yeah. Like I, you know, I hate to keep bringing up Jurassic Park, but Jurassic Park to me was the perfect blend of practice. CGI. Yeah. No. Well, uh, I mean, nothing to this day. The T Rex scene at the, with the Jeep and the kid. I mean, that, that oh, yeah. was just still, that whole sequence mm -hmm. there is just perfect, you know? Yeah. And exactly. that's a lot of animatronic in that scene. And, and yeah. Practically. And when you hear yeah, and stories of the, I mean, not the troubles, but definitely the, the instances of things that occurred using the practical effects, like the uh, T Rex's skin absorbing all the water from the rain that they had causing it to get the shakes. You know, that's funny. You don't get right. that. From <laughs> right. You don't get those no. bloopers from a CGI produced uh, segment, you know? I yeah, think exactly. about like, uh, like Bruce, the shark from jaws. Uh, oh, yeah. Like it, it was, it was a, it was a nightmare for Spielberg filming that, but you wouldn't have these legendary stories if it was CGI. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's something to be said for some of the some of the stuff that was done with practical effects are are amazing to begin with, like Mac going all the way all the way back to like Metropolis and the silent film era. They're going back to uh, Mac and me. <laughs> Mac and me. <laughs> Mac and me. That rip off of ET, that movie, or or no, oh. ET's a rip off of Mac and me. Yeah, exactly. So I got uh, two more questions for you, real quick. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Well, one's not a question. One's more of a I agree with you. Uh, stop filming your movie so dark. Oh, <laughs> I can't. Oh, that immaculate. Oh, oh, oh. Matt, yeah, the, oh. the, the, the Sydney Sweeney film. Yeah, like yeah, that was yeah. uh, that was like watching it through a black cloak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Like you're gonna have Sydney Sweeney in your film, you would think you'd want a lighter a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. I, I felt like. Um, and I'll probably catch heat for this, but uh, <laughs> was it uh, this, the second Batman movie there with Maggie Gyllenhaal? I, mm -hmm. they, I felt that she's, you know, when you see her in natural light, you know, I know that Gothic's dark and all that, but I don't know. It's just, you guys got to light. Look at old movies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all I got to say. Yeah. Check out like the 40s. And I mean, you're kind of basing it off that stuff anyways. Throw in a little bit of Phil highlight there to kind of polish it up a bit, and, you know, and, but uh, uh, the older I get, the harder I have seeing in the dark now. So like you turn the movie's dark, it's really screwing me up. <laughs> well, that's I mean, that's the thing that irritated me with that movie, particularly because I thought I was going blind. I was like, wait a second, <laughs> like it's like my house is dark, like it's pitch black out. I'm Do watching a movie, it's supposed to be daylight. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to screw with my, you know, my my contrast. It's like, yeah, oh, come on, man. You know, <laughs> and I don't know again. 
I don't know how they if they did this in post or what, but it's yeah, you know, look at the meters. Well, I think at you least. Uh, you you brought it up in your video too when you were reviewing Immaculate that there was. I don't remember the film you used as an example, but the this one scene was lit by candlelight, and you can still see everything better. Oh yeah, Barry Lyndon from nineteen seventy. Yeah, Barry Lyndon. Like uh, the whole <laughs> this whole scene is just nothing but candles, but you see everybody's faces perfectly clear. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just it's funny because when you you know when I edit the stuff, I mean, I could spend hours just talking about that. But the uh, um, putting that stuff together, it's I had another shot next to it, and I was like, nah, it wasn't working. But then when I found her, you know, walking through the cathedral, I was like, uh, in the same kind of candle as I was, oh, this is perfect. And just do that dissolve, so you see the difference. Yeah, you know, of like, you know, that's why I said, just you know, she you can see it in the, in the trailer for that film that it's that it's rather dark. <laughs> Right, and I, I, you know, yeah. and I'm glad I didn't pay for it in the theater. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> paid for, I paid, well, I paid for it online in my time, I guess. But it's just the funny thing is, I couldn't imagine just being in the theater and watching it, going, "What the heck?" Yeah, it's like, is the ball broken? I mean, <laughs> you know. All so. right, last last question here. Here we go, big one. Sure. Uh, I just watched your uh, video on Doctor Who, the fourth Doctor. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Old Who versus New Who. <laughs> <laughs> feel like i'm in seinfeld um <laughs> let's see uh, uh well, you can tell I'm me old... you can tell me you like old who better i'm not gonna get insulted oh i'm old who <laughs> i'm sorry yeah no I, I i um yeah i tried and i just i don't know i don't know i, just I guess it'd be it. like if you if you were somebody who like grew up with old who like i didn't grow up with old who that much like i i i knew of uh the fourth doctor of, of uh yeah of like yeah i knew a lot about like, like the fourth doctor mostly because that was the uh the, that was the series that premiered and played mostly in america right 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 um and a little bit like with like uh uh the mcgann character in the doctor who movie from the 90s um but my my fandom mostly started with with eccleston in the uh in the revival of who hmm well, I will say you... I do like the earlier, like uh, like Eccleston, Tennant, and Smith more than some of the later incarnations. But sure, sure, yeah. Well, all I'm going to say is I'll rephrase that a bit because uh, you know, um, once uh, the, the Tom Baker who uh, transformed into Peter Davison, I was mm-hmm. I was definitely pretty crushed as a as a youngin. So um, <laughs> he did I, the show I for uh, seven yeah, I wasn't a in it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I that was the doctor I grew up with, you know, mm-hmm. well, a little John Pertwee, but mainly him. Um, so when it transformed into him, I stuck on for a little bit, but I kind of fell off at that point. So like before knew who. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but uh, all right. Yeah, no, I, I've seen I, I've seen some of the episodes and stuff like that, and I'm glad they had mm-hmm. brought it back. Um, because that was definitely I mean, uh I'm very fond of that show uh, from growing up and, and it's uh, sad to see the way it's uh, kind of going and uh, yeah, you know, it's, but it's like, to see how the fans have fallen off, you know, the original, it, like, oh, the, 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 the beginning of the revival with Eccleston and Tennant were great because they were very old school mentality. So they still had the sort of like cheesy special effects and campy, right. you know, campy sense of humor and campy storytelling and, and had some of those elements. Uh, but right. now it's become more, especially with Disney Plus taking it over. Now it's it's very streamlined and modern. It's just like a little too modern now. Like just too sure. The special effects shouldn't be that great on Doctor Who. Right. <laughs> like yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm happy with bad special effects. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. I, I like, mean, I like my my men in rubber suits playing the monsters. You know. Yeah, exactly. And some of those old ones are classic too, because you go back like uh, Talents of Wang Chiang, which I was debating mm-hmm. on doing, and I probably won't because of you, you know who. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but there's a scene in there where they have a, they, they just used a, a rat and they just kind of superimposed it so it's bigger, you know, during a scene to make it look like it's a giant rat. So I just love the fact that it's like they were just going was the, crazy was back the, then. The episode with the spiders that it, it was like, I think it was called Planet of Spiders or something, and it was just like, big rubber spiders just kind of oh yeah around. <laughs> oh yeah no totally totally yeah all right so i think i've tortured you enough uh we can we can hop oh, no, on no into worries. the into the main segment now which is uh films that time forgot 
Uh, we have done this segment a few times now. This is a recurring one for us. I've actually lost track of how many times we've done this. I think this might be the ninth time we've done this on the show. Nine, nine times. Nine times. And we, uh, times. we have had some interesting uh, films come up in the past. Uh, I, I'm i a little nervous about this tonight, Jack. I'm not going to lie because I... Uh, I'm, the goal I'm is watch- to stump Leo. So. Yeah, the goal is to stump me. Like I, I watch a lot of movies. I watch oh. a lot of obscure movies. Uh-huh. Um, usually these guys, I think Mike stumped me one time. I'm oh, not sure if Kevin's ever stumped me on this. But oh, I'm usually yes, pretty good I at have. usually <laughs> pretty good at, at guessing the movies. Uh, but I'm nervous about going up against you because just from watching your channel, I know you have a uh, Oh, no. a far superior knowledge of obscure films than I do. <laughs> oh no! Now I feel like I, I'm feeling kind of an adult. I, I don't think I picked a more. I don't think I picked a uh, film that's uh, obscure enough. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh. no! Good. That that makes me uh, relax a little bit. <laughs> Damn it! Actually, like, the last few films I've, uh, last few videos you posted that I watched, and I'm like, these would all be really good topics for the show tonight. Because like the one you posted today was Masters of the Universe, and I'm like, oh, Man, that's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said okay. Okay, so here, let me ask you this question then, because I, yeah. I don't, I get, uh, I get feedback. But um, the thing I'm curious about is with the channel. I know I've asked you guys this before on the channel, uh, you know, in the comment section about uh, mm. the types of films I review. It doesn't really matter. You like the variety of them. Um, is that the best part? Is just kind of figuring out like what the hell it's going to be next? Yeah, I kind of enjoy like when I first watched, started watching your channel. Um, like I said, the first video was Gods of the Deep, and then I think the next one I might have I'm seen sorry. was was Call Girls of Cthulhu or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, and, yeah. and I'm like, I so heard- okay, so this guy's gonna do a lot of like you know B movie horror adjacent kind of stuff like that, and I'm okay with that. I like those kind of movies. But right. then uh, I think the first one I watched that was outside of that was Dark Man, uh, which I love Dark Man. I like Sam Raimi, so when I saw you review that, I was like, oh, cool. He's going to do some things outside of, you know, this cosmic horror genre. Uh, and then I saw your one for uh, Heroic Trio and Executioners. Right. And uh, I I love Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. I'm totally into Michelle Yeoh. So I really enjoyed those videos. And then I went and watched the movies afterwards. Oh, good. Uh, so, so, yeah, I, I do... I love the fact that it's it's a variety now, and then I'm seeing things like popping into your into your feed now, like the Doctor Who episode and uh, the Masters of the Universe today. Um, some other ones that you've done in the past, like uh, 1982, you did a, a, you did a, uh, yeah, 1980, class of 1984. 1982. <laughs> <laughs> Easily one of my favorite lines of the year, class of 1984 from 1982. 1982. Uh, yeah, it's like, kind of funny with those t- those titles like that kind of fall into play like that's I get one coming out uh, tomorrow like that too. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I've been enjoying it, and then like I, I really enjoyed your review of Madam Web. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's tough trying to do new movies because you kind of get a little buried with everybody. Um, yeah, and, and it's funny because even as many channels as I've watched over the years prior to doing this, I had no idea until I actually started doing it. It's like when you when you buy a red car, then everybody on the road's got the same red car. You're like, what the heck? Um, I, so I feel I, like that's happened now. Go yeah, ahead. I'm gonna say like between Madam Web and and Immaculate, you better lay off Sydney Sweeney for a little while. You don't want those Euphoria fans coming after you. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know, right? So uh, no, it's Madam Web. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I've watched enough videos of other people who have seen it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to know that I think I'm good. Well, it's it suffers from the same problem, like with um, you know, my 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 old ass too that. Mm-hmm these movies are just vapid I mean, yeah. it's just it's like we've seen this before we've seen mm-hmm. this before you know i feel like the zeros and ones and it's like um i mean the movie i'm gonna mention tonight i mean whether you figure it out or not i think it's like one of those movies that's it just it's like that was the inject injection at the time that was met the wrong way and i think something like that needs to kind of be met again so to speak mm-hmm. you know um you'll know what i mean but go ahead yeah okay so um, usually how we do this is one of us starts. We uh, go in a little bit of detail about the film, try to hold back on the title so we can try to guess it from each other. Um, 
Should I go first tonight so I can show like the uh, example? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. <laughs> Please, standing straight. Yeah, I don't think I've gone first in a while anyway on this. So, so I I I really kind of struggled with what I wanted to do tonight because I had a bunch of movies already like listed from when we did this segment again, and I was like, I really want to come up with something like different, especially like in honor of our guest that's coming on tonight. Um, so I did the Tubi dive. Oh no! <laughs> and and scroll through Tubi to see like what I found, and I found a movie that I haven't watched since probably the first time I watched it, and the first time I watched it was 1992. Uh, even though this movie came out in 1978, New Jack City. And, yeah, <laughs> no, <not> New Jack City. <laughs> and the reason I watched this because at the time I was obsessed with Silence of the Lambs. And so I was like absorbing anything that Anthony Hopkins had done. Uh, so I'd watch like The Lion in Winter and I'd watch a bunch of other like early things from his career. And then I found this little movie. Going back and rewatching it for the first time in a really long time and then looking up facts about it and writing down the name of the cast and crew members on my notes here. I'm reading it, looking at it going, this sounds like I made it up. <laughs> it, it's, it sounds like it almost sounds like a movie Mad Libs. Okay. So I'm going to give you the director, the actors, some of the other people in the cast, and a little bit of the synopsis of the film according to IMDb, just so you can hear how batshit crazy this sounds. So the movie came out in 1978. It's uh, rated R. It's considered a psychological thriller. It was directed by Sir Richard Attenborough, who would win an Oscar for directing Gandhi just a few years later and then go on to play John Hammond in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Uh, it was written by William Goldman, who himself is an Oscar winner and who we probably best know as the writer of Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. It is uh, scored by Jerry Goldsmith, who was just coming off an Oscar win for The Omen. And stars, as I said, Anthony Hopkins and Margaret and Burgess Meredith. Now, that's a pretty formidable cast and crew, correct? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, here's the synopsis. A magician slash ventriloquist is at the mercy of his vicious dummy while he tries to renew a romance with his high school sweetheart. Magic. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, this is what I was doing. I was diving deep into the annals of, of Tubi <laughs> to try to like get the Wow. Thing. I would not have gotten that. I am Whoa. impressed. That is Abracadabra, I sit on his knee. Presto, change -o, and now he is me. Hocus, pocus, we take her to bed. Magic is free. We're dead. Josephine Levine presents Magic, a terrifying love story, starring Anthony Hopkins, Anne Margaret, and Burgess Meredith, rated R. It's impressive, man. I was going to reaffirm New Jack City. That must have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the film is called Magic. Uh, yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, yeah, that's nightmare fuel on that one. <laughs> a magician's assistant named Corky, played by Anthony Hopkins, performs disastrously at his first solo appearance. He's given a ventriloquist dummy called Fats in order to improve his act. And within a few years, Corky's at the height of his fame. However, Fats has developed a mind of his own and wants to control his master. Are you sure this is not a Twilight Zone show? <laughs> I know it sounds. It sounds like the uh, the Don Rickles episode of uh, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, where he has the the ventriloquist dummy. <clears throat> but yeah, so this movie uh, was made for seven million dollars, uh, and domestically it made roughly twenty three point eight million dollars. Uh, I don't have many more stats than that because the 1970s box office mojo really doesn't go into much other than like the top 10 films of the year. And the number one movie that year was Grease. <laughs> but this is just, like I said, I watched it for the first time in 92, I want to say, because I had just watched Silence of the Lambs. So I was like all on the Anthony Hopkins bandwagon and watched this thinking to myself, man, this is, this is a, a creepy, creepy, scary movie, like very weird. Upon yes. rewatching it, um, I wasn't as scared. <laughs> right, right. I was oh. more like it was more like an object of curiosity to me. 
curiosity to me at the time because it was just such an odd combination of factors for such a weird film. Uh, so here's just a little bit of background on it. Gene Wilder was originally going to play the role of Corky. Uh, Richard Attenborough and William Goldsmith really wanted him, but the producer, Joseph Levine, refused on the grounds that he didn't want a comedian in the movie because it would distract from the serious nature of the story. <laughs> so, so of course you don't want you're not going to have Gene Wilder in your film, so you bring no. Anthony Hopkins, <laughs> right? To prepare for his performance in the movie, Anthony Hopkins learned actual magic tricks and studied the art of ventriloquism. Hopkins learned how to project his voice and manipulate the dummy. So, the dummy, as he speaks in the film, is actually Anthony Hopkins doing the ventriloquist act. Mm -hmm. uh, the dummy was modeled to look like Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. which is creepy in and of itself. <laughs> so upon seeing Fats for the first time, Anthony Hopkins was allowed to take the doll home to work with it. He wound up being so unnerved by it that he called the consulting ventriloquist in the middle of the night, threatening to throw the doll into the canyon if somebody didn't come and get it from him immediately. <laughs> and director, director Richard Attenborough ended up going to Hopkins' house to talk him down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's not a lot of great quotes from this film. Uh, one of them is uh, Burgess Meredith plays his his agent. Uh, agent's name is Ben Green. As he's walking into his office, he says to his secretary, Sadie, what's the first rule for being an agent? And she says, never forget that an actor killed Lincoln. And his response is, head of the <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and then, uh, spoiler alert, at the end of the film, Anthony Hopkins' character dies. Uh, I'm not going to say how, but he dies talking with the ventriloquist dummy, Fats. And their conversation goes like this. Corky says, there was never me, only us. Fats says, schmucko, us was you. Corky, what? It was you the whole time. God, I hope I don't die first. <laughs> Corky <laughs> says, I think we'll go together, chances are. Fats says, yep. <laughs> <laughs> the movie had two taglines. The first one is ridiculous. The first tagline is a terrifying love story. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Which, the love story is a very, very, very small like B-plot in the film. Uh, the other one is Abracadabra, I sit on his knee. Presto changeo, now he is me. Hocus pocus, we take her to bed. Magic is fun, but now we are dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tagline straight out of Romeo and Juliet where you give away the ending at the beginning. No kidding. Uh, so my final assessment is this. Upon rewatching the movie, does it still stand up or does it lose some of its luster? Uh, the first time I saw it, I remember thinking it's really, really creepy. This time around, after watching it, I was like, it feels like an experimental film where Hannibal Lecter was a big fan of Jeff Dunham. <laughs> 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 and and it, it it's a very like early Hopkins performance, but you see the seeds for what would become Hannibal Lecter later on in that performance. <laughs> but man, uh Jack, uh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing that really... as a as a kid, uh and uh at the time and holy smokes. And, and you know, it's funny you bring it up too, because it's one of those movies that's been on the back of my mind. I was like, man, I gotta revisit this movie and see if it's if it holds up to that luster. And and you've kind of like secured the fact that I kind of don't want to see it because <laughs> it's still kind of scary to me. And uh, and I've run mm -hmm. to kind of like maintain that a little bit, you know. It is, I mean, it still has the creep factor. I mean, Anthony Hopkins does creep factor like nobody's business. Oh, yeah, and the um, doll thing is just I mean the and doll, the doll the, and the doll, doll does look a lot like him. For right. me, the, the best part of the movie I thought was Burgess Meredith. Like he's really he's funny in it because he plays like you know the the crazy Hollywood agent, but he's also like on his side. He's not like the slimy agent trying to take advantage of him. Throughout the film, right. he's trying to get him help because he can see that his men mental status is breaking. Right. Um Anne Margaret, I love Anne Margaret. I think she's one of the most beautiful women who ever lived, but she is totally underused in this film. Yes. Uh <laughs> And they they make a big deal of naming uh, David Ogden Stairs in the uh, in the in the opening credits. He's in one scene. Um, that's Charles Winchester from Mash. For anybody who doesn't know who David Ogden Stairs is, <laughs> wow. So like he's in one scene, but he's he's in like he's like fourth or fifth build in the film. Um, yeah, it was a weird it was a weird rewatch, and I was like I had a few other ones on the on the burner here, but I was like oh, I'm gonna go with this one because 
I haven't seen this one in a while, so I know it's a, a film that time forgot. And I really want to try to, like, you know, impress Jack. <laughs> and you got me on the first sentence, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry, it came to me like in a dream, you know. Um, <laughs> no, that's so. impressive, man. That's really impressive. Thanks. Uh, who would like to go next? <laughs> I'll let one of you gents go. That was yeah. good. I'll, go I'll go ahead and go. Go ahead, Mike. Okay. So mine is not that far back. I'm actually, uh, I was almost an adult when this one came out. But this is 1992 uh, movie uh, directed by uh, Phil Alden Robinson. Okay. Starring, let's see, um, Timothy Bushfield. Uh, Mary McDonald. Um, James Earl Jones. Mm. Ben Kingsley. River Phoenix. This is sneakers. David Stratton. Yeah, <laughs> it is sneakers. Just tell me what it <laughs> is. It's sneakers. <laughs> We're up. Here we go. Let's do it. Martin, we've got video. We're slipping all in. People hire you to break into their places to make sure no one can break into their places. It's a living. Not a very good one. Mr. Bishop, we've heard a lot of great things about you. They're all true. But your team, it's uh... kind of different. Darren Roscoe, also known as Mother. Now what do you say? The NSA killed Kennedy? No. He's still alive. Erwin Emery. Also known as Whistler. Don't look. Listen. Carl Arbogast. How about Donald Kreese? 22 year veteran of the CIA. Did I ever tell you why I had to leave? <laughs> My temper. And there's Martin Bishop. He doesn't seem to have a past. God, it's good to see you. You guys have a decision to make. The penetration is live, the target is unaware. Yes. Sneaking a foreign intelligence service that might kill us to keep us out is not what we the do. The probable level of security is very low. There's a war out there, old crap, and it's not about who's got the most bullets. It's all about the information. The battle stations. Hang up, they've almost got us. He's lying. Hang up, fish. He's lying, he's lying. Hang You had me a little confused. He said Timothy Busfield uh, and and James Earl Jones, and yeah. then I immediately went to went, uh, Field of Dreams. Mm -hmm. but, but that was '88. <laughs> yeah, once he said River Phoenix, that's kind of where it came into play. Yeah, I got it yeah. uh, after like the Mary McDonald thing. I was like, Mary McDonald, what movie is she with James Earl Jones? And I'm like, I knew Mike was going to sneak James this one Earl in there. Had like a Ben Hart movie, so Ben Hart. But I, I knew like you were going to sneak this one in at some point because you know how much I love the film. <laughs> You want to no, a great movie. movie. <laughs> I love oh. sneakers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is one of those, it's a caper movie that time forgot. Mm -hmm. with, the, with the cast that I mean, Sidney Poitier's in it, Robert Redford, of course. Yeah. Um, ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley, I said that. Dan yeah. Aykroyd. Dan, Dan Aykroyd. Aykroyd. Yeah. I mean, for a movie with that many stars in it, you would think that'd be, people would think about it more often. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who played <laughs> Phil in Groundhog Day. <laughs> the guy that would be Phil in Groundhog Day. <laughs> oh, not Phil. What was his name? Phil was the name. No, it was uh, Ned Ryerson. Ned Ryerson. <laughs> That's it. I should have told you that uh, Donald uh, Logo was in it. 
<laughs> and we were really kept you guessing for a while. <laughs> I went that far deep in it. <laughs> yeah, this is this is something we do sometimes. Jack will go at like the the guys that are lower on the list to try to like make it a little more difficult. Because if he were to say Robert Redford and Ben Kingsley at the beginning, I would have been mm-hmm. all over this before he even finished the sentence. Oh, I see. I usually good, good start with the I usually the start caterer with the and then. Yeah, he was, yeah, the yeah, yeah, boy, yeah, yeah, the best boy, the grip, all that. Yeah, he tried to like, throw his book. <laughs> I don't know so this. I, I don't know if this like so. This wasn't like a super hit. I guess it was. No, it really wasn't. I mean, um, it, it, but it wasn't a bomb either. I mean, it got no. some. It got some attention in the theater, but it was. You know, it was a fun little watch. I mean, yeah, I think know. I watched um, it on on VHS. When, you know, the first time. I don't think it's something I saw in the in the theater. Yeah, I remember seeing it in the theater it myself, only, and it was, it grossed, you know, perfectly passable. It grossed 51,000 U.S. 51 million. Uh, 51, yeah, million. yeah I'm, I'm looking at it here. It said 51 million domestic. It doesn't have a, a – the worldwide is the same number, so I think that's wrong. Uh, worldwide on here says it's 105 million. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Um, It, it cost 23 million to, to make, so. <laughs> yeah. Open to 10 oh, million. Look at the cars in it. Of course, it <laughs> yeah. we had done a, an episode a while back about ensemble films, and like this is an amazing ensemble film. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think um, it's like a movie that like you don't hear about much anymore because now you have films like the Ocean's franchise and uh, uh, like Catch uh, Now You See Me and all stuff like that, which are they're like these advanced paper films. Yeah, but this right. one's more the the hacker computer hacker. Uh, 1992. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I love how I love how computer hacker hacker movies age so well. <laughs> oh yeah, like hackers. Like, like hackers. Yeah, I just watched hackers actually. Yeah, <laughs> holy smokes! Like this, this is a movie where the hacker is blind. <laughs> right, right. The Whistler, leave Whistler alone. Whistler, yeah. <laughs> I think my uh, my favorite scene in this film, Mike, is the uh, is the one where Redford's in the in Donald Logue's office, uh, trying to like get the black box, and the secretary walks in, and he has to pretend that he's a private investigator, and they're feeding him the lines over the over the over the earwig. <laughs> and make sure no, you like, give him head. <laughs> I, like, I like the part where you know they 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 got the guy's trash, and he's like he folds this up, and he goes she she and Mary McDonald's like he's particulate, he's he's somebody like this, he's Anal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good one, Mike. This is a really good pick. You have any like cool like quotes or like facts or anything? Yeah, I did get a lot of chance to get to watch this one or look stuff up on it. It's like I think I want to do this one, and then you know, my work sucks. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not like it's not one that we haven't seen a million times already. No, no. I mean, I, I just like the whole the. More or less, the premise of it's uh, his, you know, his past is coming back to bite him in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> Kingsley. In- conveniently enough, it's it's you know, <laughs> Ben Kingsley, who was his partner in the, uh, when they were kids. <laughs> yeah. I love. There, the, is one, there is one thing here that says, um, uh, when Martin and Cosmo attempt their initial prank at the beginning of the movie. The facade building seen in the famous Hill Valley is the famous Hill Valley clock from Back to the Future. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> I, uh, I do love when Ben Kingsley tries to do an accent that's not British. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, an interesting Boston accent he has going on in this film. Marty. Marty. I got the taglines here, Mike. Uh, yeah, what you got? We could tell you what it's about, but then, of course, we'd have to kill you. Kill you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to trust can be murder. Uh, that could be like a million films. <laughs> uh, a burglar, a spy, a fugitive, a delinquent, a hacker, and a piano teacher. And these are the good guys. <laughs> so you're making the assumption that piano teachers are bad people. <laughs> <laughs> I've they never must, met a good must, one. <laughs> they missed out on the perfect tagline for this film because they could have used C Tech Astronomy. C Tech Astronomy, yeah. C Tech Astronomy, no more secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen this movie way too many times. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the last time I saw this movie. Uh, it's been a while. 
For me, it was probably like I will if it comes on. Like if I'm oh yeah, I'm watching it. Surfing, and I'm like, oh sneakers, you know. The, the I'm main, most likely, the main I'm most likely watch it after we're topic, done recording. But the main the main problem with this topic is when you find a good one, but you can never find that movie free anywhere. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, you should have did like I did. I'm not just... paying. I'm not paying any money for a 20 year old movie. <laughs> no, you should do what I did. Then you should just troll Tubi and look for. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, for no, I, movie. I, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Back the, on the last thing about um, sneakers, I want to say is I I picked this movie pretty much last minute because it is one of the few films that time forgot that has James Earl Jones in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of looked at it too because. Yeah, that's one of my favorite, uh, like, pop in like cameo appearances too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> what would you like? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got Kevin. We got Jack. Who wants to go? Yeah, you know what, Jack? I'll leave you to last. Last. Try right. that way. You can wrap it up. Yeah. Um, where should I start with the actors, the actresses, the tagline? How about what year the movie was made? In what year the movie was made? That sounds good. Okay, uh, nineteen eighty-seven. Ooh, uh-oh. Yeah. So we covered eighty-seven on one of our uh, year in film history episodes. So, uh-oh, we did. Let's say I don't think this was covered in our episode. Uh, okay. Directed by Joe Dante. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm already halfway there. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'll start obscure. Okay. Uh, starring um, actors and actresses such as Robert Picardo, Wendy Shaw, Kevin McCarthy, and Vernon Wells. And those are all the obscure ones. Okay. <laughs> And in just a minute, I'll list the three that will give it away in in no time flat. Also starring Meg Ryan, Martin Short. Inner Space. Inner Space. (laughs) (laughs) Test pilot Tuck Pendleton wants to make history. Supermarket clerk Jack Putter needs a vacation. Sir, I'm Jack. Sorry, I'm late. That's not good. You know it's coupon day. Lieutenant Pendleton is about to be miniaturized, placed into this needle, and then injected into this rabbit. Rock and roll. But something went wrong. And Tuck's about to get a new destination. <gasps> Inside Jack Putter. I'm in a man. Can you hear me? I'm possessed! Now, Jack's got twice the problems. How you doing, Jack? But he's double the man. With Tuck on his side. Kick more cows! In his gut. <laughs> and on his case. You're not gonna back groceries all your life, are you, Jack? And only 24 hours left for Jack to get out of danger. So that Tuck can get out of Jack. <laughs> Dennis Quaid, Martin Short. Give yourself a shot of adventure. Inner Space. Jeez, boy, I was, was kind of kind of there with Robert Picardo a little bit. Yeah. See, you can't give wow. you can't give the director too much with Leo because I did one last time. It was an animated film. I, I gave him the director, and he's like, "Oh, it's this it's secret in him." <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I would know who Don Bluth was? Like I was like, <laughs> oh boy, yeah. I so, should have uh, dropped yeah. the tagline, which is very obscure. This uh, this summer, take a trip you'll never forget. Oh my god, I mean, that's like man, Back to the Future. That's uh, yeah, that could be anything. <laughs> Road trip could use that. Tri- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I grew yeah. to love that. I grew to love this movie. Grew to like this movie. I should say not love it, but like it a lot. Uh, and I did like it initially because when this movie came out, I was uh, eight. You know, um, and I don't think I even watched it until I was probably nine or ten. And then at that time, 
you're seeing it, it, it for those who don't know it's a movie about you know science and the scientists are trying to shrink um a man in a in a capsule of some sort uh to experiment to put him into the body of a rabbit um but then a i guess a terrorist group an organization comes in to steal the technology because they feel that they can use it and sell it to the highest bidder. Um, and in the whole process of breaking into this laboratory, the scientist who has the vial that has the shrunken capsule ends take ends up taking it to a uh, shopping center, a mall, and inject injecting it into Martin Short's character, who is just a shop a, a grocery store clerk. Who's a little neurotic, a little, um, it's a word when you're always feeling you're sick. Uh, He's, um... It's a uh, <laughs> necrophiliac, right? Yeah. He's <laughs> not necrophiliac. No, no, that's, no, no, that's not it. That's not he's it. A, that's uh, not he's it. a hypochondriac. Hypochondriac. Yeah. There we go. Look, hypochondriac. Yeah. and hypochondriac. Um, and, you know, the process goes from there. Uh, so yeah. now the little capsules in Martin Tour's body. Um, and the, the things that you guys know how much I love gore, right? Um, especially at a younger age, the things that I couldn't get past were the needle into the eyeball, even though it was all oh. just, you know, just from the it's opposite the side, it was so that I could see, you know, Jack could see what was going on. And I agree with you because I hate anything that has to do with the eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just lately, somebody was telling me about their LASIK procedure. I was like, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. <laughs> well, you, you don't feel anything, but you sure as hell can smell it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come on. Uh, um, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then the, the other scene where they actually get another uh, pod into the same body, and they're fighting, and it's in the stomach, and the, the resolution, sorry if it's a spoiler, if nobody's seen it, but the resolution is that uh, Martin Schwartz's character has to churn up stomach acid to kind of save the the pot of the guy who's in him already. And you just see this skeleton floating around in the stomach. It was, ugh. <laughs> um, but that being aside, that aside, and now I can watch it now with a, no, no, no hesitation. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. It's enjoyable. You know, it's a great story. It brought us um, Meg Ryan and Dennis Quaid together. Um, yeah, I will say for a second here, Kev. As soon as you said Meg Ryan, I was I was waiting for Joe versus the volcano to pop. Uh, <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> this has one of my favorite, like that guy '80s villains in it, which is Kevin McCarthy. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. He was like an '80s villain in like cheesy comedies though because he was in this and then two years later he did uh uhf with we're all the <laughs> <laughs> which is a another film that time forgot i think <laughs> nobody nobody nowadays even knows what uhf means <laughs> <brought us Yeah. laughs> Richard. but yeah this is a great movie man i love this yeah, movie. It was. and it wasn't until i looked it up i realized spielberg was attached to it i think uh executive producer Hey, he was a, a, one of the producers on it. Mm -hmm. He also won the uh, award for uh, effects and uh, best special effects in 1980. Mm -hmm. um, and this was, was his third collaboration with the director. They did Gremlins and they did um, Gremlins, Inner Space. Yeah. Yeah, come on, man. Why can't I think of a third one? <laughs> Joe Dante. Anyway, it, Oh, Joe Dante. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, yeah. Joe Dante was the Howling. He did uh, Gremlins, Inner Space, Small yep. Soldiers. He started um, at Corman's as well. Yeah. <laughs> He's another Roger Corman guy. Yep. Uh, it, it, I'm trying to think of another movie. Yeah, I, I had another movie in the back of my head that he did, and I can't think of what it is, but I'm sure it'll come to me at some point. Oh, he did I The Burr. Oh, The Burr. Okay. Guys, I kept thinking of uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I know. I didn't know. Oh, The Explorers. Was The Explorers? Yes, Explorers. There you go. So the Explorers is the first movie I ever talked about when we did this segment for the first time. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Because <laughs> um, uh, I had watched it as a kid, loved it as a kid. First movie for River Phoenix and Ethan Hawke, and then rewatching it, and I was like, man, I was a stupid kid. 
<laughs> it's not bad up until the point where they meet the aliens. The aliens are just kind of like, you know, ridiculous. Yeah, that's another one that I, 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 I remember at the time I was kind of like maybe lukewarm, and then you, when you go back on those thoughts, you're like, huh, should I stick with my gut and just not again? One of those things like, do I not venture back? You know? Yeah. Um, so I haven't yet, but uh, I, I don't know. That's always one that's been curious again. Yeah, mm-hmm. inner now, inner space is one I have not seen in a really long time. Right. Same, yeah. same with inner space. I was actually thinking yeah. about that after doing the uh, Dreamscape uh, review. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, I, was I, like, haven't, oh. I haven't seen inner space in a really long time. Uh, he also like, directed that's not even one, that could be rebooted or or remade yeah. or whatever. Uh, it would be a CGI it is, fest. It would be. <laughs> yeah, it's been be. such a long time between the initial movie and this. Yeah. You know? And it's, starring, it's, it's a premise that's not touched on by many. Yeah, starring Glenn Powell. <laughs> <laughs> no, starring Jared guy. Leto. <laughs> Jared Le- oh, my God. <laughs> Jared Leto would play the Robert Picardo character, the Texan. You <laughs> saw he's going to be, you said that uh, they're asking him to be Skeletor. That's my favorite. That's oh my new my favorite. God. Jared Leto? <laughs> yeah. Is, that's my is, new Skeletor gonna have, is Skeletor going to have tattoos all over his face, too? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> He's going to do all the memes that we see of Skeletor. Skeletor. Yeah. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. Until <laughs> we meet again. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Dante directed one of my other really like fav- favorite bad movies that I still don't mind watching, and it's Gremlins 2, The New Batch. <laughs> oh, I love that one. Yeah. That's vicious. But it's a good bad movie. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Kev, you got anything right. else you want to throw in there? Or, uh... Uh, no, I think I'm good. Um, there were some... No, no, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Jack, it's all you, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, <laughs> let's see here. All right, so I got 1987 as well. Uh, um, all right. Director is Phil Janu. Ooh. Sounds French. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'll start listening. Oh man, it was a tough one. Let's see. Um, Mike Jolly. There's uh, some of the cast here. Guy Massey, Philip Baker Hall. Oh wow. Jeffrey Tamborn. Tambor, I guess. Uh, Mitch Pileggi. Wow. John, Jonathan Wise. Um, okay, well, now we're going to get up to the may or may not give it away. Let's see. Again, <laughs> Annie Ryan. And we got Richard Tyson. And then the last but not least, Casey Seismico. Casey Shamaska? Is that, is that your Casey, Casey Shamaska. Um, <laughs> Casey Shamaska. Sorry. Uh, I thought I've been pronouncing it wrong all these years. Shemosko. I would like to request a tagline, please. <laughs> Tagline: Jerry Mitchell just bumped into Buddy Ravel. Now Jerry isn't just thinking about math or English because at three o'clock he's three o'clock history. high. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have known from the beginning it was going to be one of those days. His name is Jerry Mitchell. Hi, Jerry. 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 Hi, I'm, I'm Jerry Mitchell. I'm with the school paper. <laughs> he just met the new kid in school. The guy's the closest thing to Charlie Manson ever seen at Weaver. Now, we're going to have a fight today after school. He's got six hours to get out of it. It's been quite a morning, Jerry. You can say that again. He'll try running. I wouldn't leave school without a good reason. He'll try bribery. If I can get that money, do you think you'd do it for me? Ravel will never bother you again. Guaranteed. He'll try robbery. I hear you're giving Jerry Mitchell a hard time. <laughs> Till finally. The fight is on. You and me in the parking lot. Three o'clock. Jerry's got a lot on his mind. Ten seconds. But he's not thinking about math or English. Five seconds. Because at three o'clock, he's going to make history. There isn't going to be any fight today. (laughs) 
I kind of had I it. I would not have gotten it, but I knew Leo would. I kind of had it at Casey Shamasco because there weren't very few movies that he was the star in. No, like I, I remember him. As like, he, yeah, he was yeah. in Young Guns as one of the side characters. Uh, he yeah, was yeah. In, he was in uh, Biloxi Blues as one of the side yeah. characters. Yeah. But I, yeah, it was oh, one of the few movies future, he starred in. You know? Yeah, so it was one of the few movies he starred in. Right, uh, and I was kind of on three o'clock high, but you read the tagline, and that kind of like that sealed it, obviously, because it mentioned yeah, obviously, it's everything. Tag. I was reading the tagline earlier. I was like, oh man, I was just gonna completely give it away if anybody yeah. knows it. <laughs> and then yeah, three o'clock high. Yeah, that is definitely one of the tagline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was working. Uh, I was in actually, it's probably about his age at the time. So I was working at actually one of the first video stores from where I was, and. Uh, remember this poster coming up because Drew Struzan, and I'm a huge Drew Struzan fan and, you know, Brady's a lost Ark, you know, you know, mm -hmm. his, obviously his artwork is profound with uh, film uh, history and pop culture. And so when, when that went up in the, in the store, I was like, asked the boss, I was like, can I have that after, you know, <laughs> you're done with it. And so, uh, or no, I'm sorry. At first it was at the movie theater. That's right. And then it came to the, that's where I picked it up is at the, um, video store later on. But when I first hit the movie theater, um, I remember seeing that and it's just such a striking piece. So catching that, um, for the first time, um, it's, it came out right before Heather's. So it was that mm -hmm. mix of like, you had the John Hughes era and then you have this movie, which is not the same. Um, it's very yeah. kind of doing its own thing. It's almost like before Coen Brothers was Coen Brothers, you know, it's in, in, in Sam Raimi. It's kind of got that mixed bag of the way the camera movements are, the way some of the characters are and character characters are of um, some of the students. And uh, uh, trying to say? give you that Go sort ahead. of like, like, uh, like, uh, like play on the Western thing, like 12 o'clock high kind of stuff. And, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Very yeah. extreme. To the, mm -hmm. to the like a spaghetti western of I guess high school you know uh, comedies yeah. at the time, because um, then I think like Heather's took it in in almost like that middle of the ground direction between the two worlds sort of, and then kind of pushed it in its own way. Here's that um, the poster you were talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that's that's a that's a pretty pretty you know strike. Like <laughs> poster, yeah, the poster kind of sells it more than like the trailer did. I think. That looks like the same kind of artwork used in a lot of young adult novels in the eighties. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, like Hardy Boys meets Rocky. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> the Davy and Goliath, I guess. You know. Yeah, and, uh, and that's there. There's the tagline you were just reading at the top of the poster too. At right. Three o'clock high. Three o'clock East history. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, but I don't know if you guys remember, um, some kind of wonderful that, that, that oh, yeah. was kind of like that, yeah. that, yeah. that, that one kind of John Hughes-esque movie that came out between all that as well. So there's that, that, that kind of surge of not surge, I should say, but there's a few of those kind of darker, um, uh, movies that came out about high school stuff at, you know, in the latter part of the eighties yeah. uh, and not as dark as, you know, class of 1984. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That movie's not funny. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's yeah. funny, got funny moments, but it's, that's a dark yeah, like, film. The one of those that, that, that dark like, school ties, but you know, <laughs> well, yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, Kevin, so. Kevin and I are, are both teachers and it's like, I can't imagine getting away with like murdering my students at the end of the movie, even though they were criminals. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I love this. We went through some of the pictures from three o'clock high, and there's quite obviously an administrator between the two about the fight, and it's like he's not doing nothing. He's just oh. standing. <laughs> yeah, no, he's the, he's the uh, he's the punching bag. Yeah, no, and, and what I love too is just the you know um, just the idea that you know with with these characters and this kind of I don't know that just like used to be for this kind of Western aspect of high school back then was just kind of. It hit me personally at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so seeing this and, and just kind of the way I was watching films at the time, because working at a video store too, you know, back then, um, you know, it was awesome. <laughs> you know, just see everything coming <laughs> in. You're just like watching everything as much as fast as humanly possible. Going, oh my God, this is amazing. Everything's available to me. You know, um, I could just get paid to watch movies all day. So uh, that was kind of fun. So seeing this again and again over the years has is, is, is been, uh, has always been a joy to me because, um, and every time it pops on, um, and I think it's, I don't know if it's on Tubi or Amazon right now, but um, I own a copy of it as well because it's just one of those ones that's on a rainy day, pop this one in for good measure. 
Oh. Kevin just like, mentioned Transformers uh, the movie for me and Lee. Yeah. <laughs> What's Mike, that? Mike, Mike would you say Mike. Like Transformers the movie for me and Yeah, like Neil. Transformers the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Cartoon, the, the yeah. Animated, the animated one, yeah. The animated but, one. Yeah. So, Mike, you mentioned uh, uh, School Ties, was it? Or was that Kevin? Yeah, School Ties. Uh, Mike, Mike, yeah. Mike says School Ties. And that, that made me think of another one that's like a movie that time forgot that's school-related that mm. falls into that, like, dark dark story about school kind of Principal? thing. It's not, it, no, it's from... <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one, too. From 1991 was... Um, it's Sean Astin and and uh, Will Wheaton. It's a uh, uh, toy oh, soldier. Oh yeah, a toy soldier. Yeah. Oh my god, I remember seeing that in the theater too. Holy smokes! Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I saw that theater and people cheered when uh when yep. Will Wheaton, Will Wheaton got shot. shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just getting done doing you know Wesley Crusher and everybody hated Wesley Crusher. So oh, this was so so unpopular. This was so over the top this movie and i there was another another podcast was talking about it recently and God, i was like i forgot about that one i haven't watched it i so i actually rewatched it like a couple months ago because i was like oh, man, i haven't seen this forever and it's it holds up it's it's just as hilarious as it was in 1991 <laughs> <laughs> oh. so uh, that's a little bonus one for tonight <laughs> that's funny. if we want something well hold up let's do uh, iron eagle next time iron eagle <laughs> that's a good one yeah Toy any, any, kind of like the low key version of Red Dawn, isn't it? It's kind of because they never, <laughs> yeah, they, never right. leave, they never leave the school grounds. So. <laughs> and it's got the, uh, it's got the, uh, yeah, it's another Luke Gossett Jr. Man, you got that in, in school ties and the in uh, Toy Soldiers, and you got him in Iron Eagle. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, um, <laughs> whew, I love this. Is my favorite of all. Like we have a few different reoccurring segments. This is by far my favorite. Uh, because oh, cool. it always it always gets us back to like you know talking about these movies that like even I forgot about you know and it's like oh I gotta rewatch that like I'm gonna probably watch Inner Space tonight while I'm like editing the show <laughs> <laughs> uh, and watch Sneakers tomorrow and <laughs> watch Sneakers tomorrow yeah <laughs> I mean that's kind of the fun uh, thing about doing this is you get to go back and see some of these uh, old films and revisit uh, revisit those mm. memories at the same time you know yeah and it's that, one of uh, the it's one of the things I like about your YouTube channel is that like some of the movies I've seen plenty of times, right? It's like, Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Or, you know, and, and then, but then occasionally I get like ones that I've never seen before, but sound like my kind of, you know, cup of tea. So I, I watch these new movies and it's great. I love it. Yeah. Well, it's, that's one of the things I've been trying to do with the channel as well is being able to make it so that, um, you know, Cause you don't know who's, you know, whether that's why I always just have spoilers at the beginning, because I'm like, it's going to be too difficult to try to weave it mm. through, through that. Plus it gives me a little bit more leeway. And so I try to make every video slightly different. So it's not just the same old thing. Whereas I try to find, um, I don't know, something out of it to kind of carry this, the thread through, um, you know, maybe to kind of enlighten people that have like yourself have seen movies a bunch of times, but maybe you, Oh, right. That happened in that movie. I forgot about that. So it's, you know, kind of re-sparking a new interest in something that's been probably you know been worn over mm -hmm. no it's it's cool and i'm i'm so happy uh you're able to join us tonight it's 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 been uh, awesome having you and uh thank you yeah. appreciate it and i appreciate you giving us your time to come on tonight uh you want to uh let's uh we'll do a couple more uh, little things get to the end of the show and i'll have uh jack i'll have you give out your info at the end there and uh sure and we'll close it out so mike you have any uh, beer trivia tonight for us i have a beer fact i don't believe it but i'm going to read it to you anyway <laughs> There's evidence that drinking beer lowers the ri the risk of type two diabetes. Reachers noted that alcohol increases production of hormone known as a tryptophan that improves insulin sensitivity. I guess well, I gotta drink. Know, I, I drink <laughs> about two a day and the beer. I it just I guess it doesn't. I guess they cancel out. I get type two diabetes anyway. <laughs> I guess I should I should drink more beer then because like my doctor's got me uh, getting a blood test to check my A1C so it's like <laughs> just drink more well, beer. My my was up last time so I gotta <laughs> again. Uh, we got a cinema quote of the week here. The cinema quote of the week is: the reason I keep making movies is I hate the last thing I did. I'm trying to rectify my wrongs from Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. 
Uh, so, uh, hey, Jack, have you seen uh, uh, Bo is Afraid? <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> oh, you're no. not missing much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If he's trying to rectify his wrongs, he's got some rectification to do with that one, I think. So. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you know, it's funny because it's it's one of those things where I decided, like, if I'm going to go see a movie in the theater or whatever, I, you know, because the theater I go to is a pretty good distance away. But um, I don't mind going there if it's something I feel like, all right, I'll check this out. But I started seeing reviews for that, and I was like, how long is it? <laughs> yeah, that's like my first thing. And I'm like, what is it? And then I was like, I could just wait. If I, yeah, maybe I'll get to it eventually. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a film. Yeah. I heard about the member <laughs> in the attic and all that. Yeah, but it's uh, a film, they, they made it. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's stuff that happens in it. <laughs> well, it's it, that, I mean, that a riveting review there, Lee. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's better than my review of Saltburn. <laughs> <laughs> Stop her. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say that you know, it just reminds me of the stuff like, um, I was gonna say Gummo back when that first came out. I was like, huh, uh, yeah, you know, um, yeah. And, and that's not, I'm sure, not even in the close realm of what you're talking about, but uh, um, gum, Gummo is absolutely coherent next to Bo is afraid. Oh, geez, okay, <laughs> wow. So yeah. On a rank God. of Gandhi to um, cocaine bear. <laughs> <laughs> off the chart off the chart yeah i love cocaine bear. The cocaine bear. <laughs> i actually enjoyed cocaine bear <laughs> Not, you also enjoyed, more, uh, I, I enjoyed it more than i enjoyed blood and honey <laughs> and way more than i enjoyed slother house okay oh. <laughs> Man, you, you're I, asking to be punished. <laughs> I watch a lot of shit, and not all of it's good. <laughs> Was no, it worse no. than uh, the one we did with uh, uh, Oh Hallow's Eve? Oh uh, no! Oh uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. House of a Thousand Corpses. I I'm still angry. I watched that movie. <laughs> okay. Oh, the Rob the Rob the Zombie, Rob Zombie film. It is. <laughs> Oh my god thank you for saying that because i always feel like i'm in the uh like in the minority of that and and i only saw it once when it you know whenever it first came out on video or dvd or whatever and uh i, I hated that movie Go back <laughs> i don't know why. Was, was that on there that was on their podcast wasn't it not ours. yeah it was on there so we we had uh i i saw it when it first came out and i hadn't seen it since then and then we guessed it on another podcast called all hollows eve and they did a uh a halloween like movie tournament thing with their listeners mm. and the movie that was chosen for this Halloween episode was House of a Thousand Corpses. So oh, I, had we, to, I had to, we had to rewatch it. We had to rewatch it, as, <laughs> to re-watch it because we were going on the show and I was so angry that I was forced to watch this movie a second time. <laughs> we started off the episode apologizing because we shit on that movie. Oh, I was, yeah, and I, I like, I think I got drunk before we even got on the show because I just didn't feel like talking about it, and it was, right. <laughs> it was, it was rough. That's funny. yeah. So yeah, movies can uh, do that to you. Yeah, they can, and then they can, uh, but they can also inspire you, like Jurassic Park. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, guys, how were your drinks this evening? They were good. Um, I had to uh, do a sniff test on the Brodello because I, <laughs> I cracked it open and I got a waft of something. Um, I don't know <laughs> if it was just because it was... Yeah, well, yeah, it was in a cooler that's been out on my patio since July. So. Yeah, it probably got <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I drank uh, it and I feel fine, so... Yeah. My, my drinks were, I enjoyed both of my drinks. The cider donut one was really good. Um, that one's been sitting in my fridge for a while, but that one was really, really good. Mm. I forgot to ask you at the beginning there, Jack. What do uh, old gods such as yourself like to drink? I'm a, I'm usually a, a bourbon or scotch guy myself. Nice. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're, we we're big bourbon guys. guys. <laughs> yeah, Mike and I are bourbon guys. Uh, yeah, occasionally, I'll try to do like a like a theme drink for the night, like some kind of mixed drink or something. And, mm. and uh, I just didn't have time to come up with it for the night. I would love to have done something. Themed, you know, themed for the night, but... bubbling up and uh, steaming in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, again, uh, big thanks to Cthulhu Jack for spending some time with us and participating in our main segment tonight. 
Uh, make sure you check out his YouTube channel, Cthulhu Jack, for some awesome movie reviews and some other fun material. Uh, Jack, is there anything you'd like to add? Any other places that you know people can find you or, or reach out to you? Um, I'll, well, first off, just uh, thank you so much for having me on. I do appreciate it. And being also supporters of the channel yourselves, um, mm -hmm. it does mean a lot to me in getting it out there. Um, super happy that we're gaining traction like we are. And um, yeah, just it's... I just love making, I just love making um, little videos and putting a smile on your face. So yeah. just go to uh, Cthulhu Jack Presents and uh, have a good time. Yeah, I, I highly recommend his channel, uh, YouTube channel. They're yep, five minute bites, man. They're awesome. It's awesome yeah, to have just like a quick good, little yeah. little movie review bite like that, and they're and they're, they're always fun and and very informative. Uh, thank you. So yeah, again, thank you for joining us, man. I really appreciate it. We we're really happy you you came on. This is. Uh, uh, this was exciting for us, you know, and uh, yeah, I hope hope you have a, a you know continued success with your channel. Uh, I, I expect to see a hundred thousand subscribers next time I go on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it, and I'm yeah. looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight for episode 164, Films That Time Forgot, with our special guest Cthulhu Jack. We hope you enjoyed listening to the podcast as much as we enjoyed recording it for you. Remember, you can reach out to us at filmsoffermentation at gmail.com or visit linktree.com to find all of our social media and podcast links. We are also on Patreon if you'd like to support the show. Uh, you can buy our merchandise at teespring.com or find out more about us and the other podcasts at the Deluxe Edition Network, The Den, by going to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Don't forget to stop by the crossroads between pickled and fermented next time around for episode 165. Next week, we're going to be doing a tribute to the late, great James Earl Jones. So please join us for that episode. Once again, I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. And I'm Jack. Yeah, and that's Jack. <laughs> this has been the Films and Fermentation Podcast. Hail Cthulhu. <laughs> and cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.